and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 522. Uh, a little early this week, recording on Saturday, October 30th. Uh, didn't feel like recording on Halloween, you know. It's uh, better to get this out of the way beforehand in case we just... I, want, I definitely didn't want to skip an episode this week because we'd have a few things to talk about. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Um, the person taking time out of his valuable birthday weekend oh, to do a podcast. I know. Happy, happy, happy AKA birthday Kevin. the other day, Kevin. And not Charlie. Yeah, I, uh, I have a lot of end of October friends with birthdays. Like I have a couple Halloween birthdays. I have a couple people like right at the like 29th, 30th, 31st. Like, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's and lot, I probably between birth- between the 20th and 31st, I think I probably know five friends with birthdays in that 10 day yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. I guess us Scorpios are just attracted to each other. <laughs> Uh, Brock probably, I know, like I said, it's an off, off recording day. So, we, um, dragged in who I could, uh, Brock is uh, dealing with kids. Hopefully he's able to, uh, join us. Um, uh, he's, he's moved in still a little bit of work to do, but I, I, I think he's going to try to jump in here for a few minutes if he can, but, uh, um, should be a short episode tonight. We don't have a ton to talk about, but you know what? That's all good. It's, uh, it's Halloween. We actually had, um, our little neighborhood does their, Usually it's like the Friday of Halloween. They do their like little kids all do the Halloween thing in the in the area. And we set up stuff outside. We had our lights on. And we had our, our little gate open. Nobody came. Like they just never came over here. We're kind of like waiting. And like, did they, did they not like us? Did they skip us? Like, what the hell? <laughs> Very weird. Hey, do you remember a Halloween costume from childhood? I have a picture of me in a Darth Vader Halloween costume Whoa. from childhood, like in the like you know like the Star Wars T shirt with the plastic Darth <laughs> Vader helmet. Yes. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. The, like the what do they call it? Like the like the like the what are they, like the painter's smock or what you know, almost like oh, they right, were wearing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like oh, the, yeah. the cape is like vinyl. Almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I we and that was like the tail end of. That oh, what's that company? They is started doing it ben, again. Ben something. Yeah, they started making those again. It's like a retro yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, but but um, yeah, I have I do have a picture of mine uh, of me in, in a Darth Vader one. I just can't think of that company's name. It's gonna drive yeah, me crazy. Yeah. Ben cool. Cooper. Ben there Cooper. Yeah, that's about all we had. It's not like these days where people have like oh, their engineer yeah. parents make like full on like transforming uh, robot, transforming transformer costumes for them. Like now we are like here. Here's a shirt that says Star Wars. You're right. a Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> there you was something just- magical though about browsing those costumes in the store when they'd be lined up and you just see the masks. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I remember. Yeah. Like rows Creepy. of masks. I did I did that Ben Cooper Batman three years in a row until I graduated <laughs> to actual homemade costume when my mom sewed me um, Green Lantern the fourth year after Batman. Ah, oh, it's not like now. I bet if you were Green Lantern now, people would know who it was. Right. I'm sure nobody. No. People are like who the hell. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's for the That's school cool. Halloween parade. That's awesome. That's super funny. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we ended up finishing up Dune. So that's our, uh, talk about Dune on, on Geekbox this week for sure. Uh, anyway, we've got a couple things to talk about here. Um, one of the big ones, uh, from this past week, I don't, I, I, my dates are all blurring together. I can't remember what we ended up talking about, but there's, there's more to say. So we're gonna, we're gonna go into this. Uh, been reported on numerous sites, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm reading specifically from Comics Beat. They had a pretty good, uh, they did a, pretty good rundown of the paper shortages affecting the comic book industry right now. Uh, uh, Image announced that they are no longer going to do second prints of every any title because they're trying to get as many people to just order the first prints. It's more profitable. It's easier to deal with. They don't have to like do rush prints with the printer because they can't. Uh, there's just there's not enough paper and there's not enough production. Um, the lead time to do those second prints is uh, it's usually a very fast turnaround and the paper companies just can't get it that fast anymore. Um, we've seen um, uh, we've seen uh, just just every company Marvel has delayed something like 75 or 80 titles at this point. You know, a week here, a week there, a couple have become bi-monthly with the shipping uh, every other month instead of every month. I think um, God, Customer was just asking today about a book. 
uh, what was it? Um, Fantastic Four Life Story. Oh yeah, where yeah, that's that's now bi monthly for the final couple of issues. Uh, it won't wrap up till January twenty twenty two. Oh yeah, now that you're saying it, I I kind of was subconsciously aware. It seemed like a long time between issues. Yeah, the next one's like mid November, and then like end of January for the wow, next issue. Oh, that's yeah, pretty good th- though. Th- it's just this is like the so. What's going to happen is it's going to get much worse and then it will get better because they're, they're, it's just going to, everything's going to just stack and stack and stack and start being a little bit later and a little bit later. And then the, when the companies start to get the paper back in and when they start to hire more people that can run the printers longer, it will probably very rapidly switch back to not say the way it was. It'll probably never be the way it was, but at least more normal. Uh, there was a, a, a quote from Vox uh, here as well that um, uh, for MPD, which is the the oh the, uh, the um, thing that tracks like, physical good sales in America, um, for BookScan, which is the the, the book version, uh, printed book sales increased thirteen point two percent from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty one, or sorry, from twenty twenty to twenty twenty one, and. Uh, when you go from 2019 to 2021, it was up 21%. Uh, a good year, maybe 3 or 4%, uh, says MPD book analysis, Kristen McLean. The growth you saw last year and this year is pretty unprecedented. So that is books, but clearly comic books and, and graphic novels being a, par- a portion of that as well. Uh, so there is just uh, massive, massive growth in print, uh, all print mediums. Uh, in, uh, uh, the hardcover is oversized graphic novels, slipcases, things like uh, the Something is Killing the Children slipcase edition that was just printed, that they printed at 300% more than their last highest selling graphic novel. And yet we were allocated to 16% of our order. That's how many people bought it and ordered it. And that's how few were available comparatively. Uh, so hey, it's Brock. Um, so if we uh, uh, if that was not overprinted, we would have got like maybe one or two copies. Uh, so yeah, they there is just um, uh, the the lead time on those books, the the graphic novels, the compendiums, the, like the big ones, the oversized hardcovers, the the slipcases, the box sets, they all come from. Um, Asian printers because it's more involved than just a traditional book. There's the the slipcase. There's the there's the um, um, the binding that goes in it. There's the additional stuff that comes with with having a an oversized hardcover or the uh, the uh, the box sets. So uh, they are six months, nine months back. So yeah, it's all that stuff is just getting pushed. More and more and more. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a um, um, Heidi McDonald says here. Um, um, I was talking to one creator who had a slow running Kickstarter, even though he's not ready to print a book. There's no paper or press time to do it. So it is going to be a a, uh, um, a a thin uh, supplies of graphic novels and comics going into. Uh, going into Christmas and into early next year. Let's hope things get a little better next year uh, once manufacturing is back up and things are just, people are, you know, more people returning to work, hopefully, and and, and printing companies figuring out how to deal with uh, maybe fewer staff, maybe more automation. We'll see. We'll see. That's all I got. No paper. There was something about in in Europe where they were like, we're literally out of paper. Like the like the major printing man. I, I I don't think it's part of it. I don't think I read it in in her piece here. But there was a um. Uh, uh there was a um, yeah, there was some report about there literally just not being paper at all for any of the European printers right now. So like, <laughs> they just what's in production is done. Next year, you know, give it another eight, eight to 12 weeks, and then maybe they'll start to see more come in, but they're just out. You know, my hope would be 
we'll see things like junk mail become illegal. <laughs> that would be very nice. That would that would say in political mail become uh, not a thing anymore. That would save so much paper. You know what paper I would love to have saved? What's that? Welcome. I'm here. I, I, we said hello. Coupons they give you. Coupons they give you at the store. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. The, Those little, t- t- like, just give it to me. So on my Target, app, right? Don't give me a paper. So coupon. Target has like the. Um, and by the way, I did say hello. I said hello when you came in. I said, "There's Brock." Oh, I didn't. I wasn't in the okay, yet. Okay. So, um, welcome, Brock. Welcome. Um, yeah, no, like Target does the uh, the circle. What's it called? Target app. Yeah, circle, it's red, red cir- cir- circle red. Yeah. It used to be cartwheel, now it's circle. Yeah, it's just called circle. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah, digital apps. And look, obviously, they, they can't do that for everything. But yeah, the the, the tip in advertisements and newspapers, like, although I, you know, I, I don't even know how much that's, that's anything. I mean, it pays for it, right? People pay for that stuff. So clearly, the newspapers need it. But I don't know, man. Like, get rid of junk mail. Get rid of political mail. That would... God, that would... Maybe, maybe, maybe like, maybe catalogs need to be opt-in, not opt-out. Like... I just can't imagine that like we get we get these fucking phone books from Uline and I mm-hmm. I closed my account and I still get these things and I just toss them like I don't want them like I how how many people are actually using those to order anything yeah we talk about like the printed previews catalog right I mean clearly yeah people use it but like well, make it a request a only, example. not a some not you know get rid of that junk stuff. It's such a waste. Well, that's a good example because remember, DC got rid of their solicitation and went all digital, mm-hmm. and they brought it back because I'm guessing they had a huge drop in initial order. Right, they had a lot of like well, people not ordering it. As I understand it, as I understand it, um, people like that catalog. It, it, the the effects on the sales of comics is minimal at best, but 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 people do like the catalog. So, um, but to DC's credit, when they brought it back, they brought it back streamlined mm-hmm. and much smaller, and it's a much better. Like, there's less waste of space. Like, they put the stuff in there. Like the like it, it is a well like what they put in and what they print on is. Is done very yeah. It's well. maybe a quarter of the right. size, but but it, it works right. It's, it 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 does yeah. what it needs to, and so yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to. Uh, I don't know what the answer is. Some of it's just production. Some of it's stuff stuck in cargo ships. Some of it's the fact that it's just a, it's a it's a combination of the supply. Yeah, chain. I'm sure one in a hundred people working in production have died. Maybe one in fifty people working in production have died from COVID. <laughs> you know, it's just there's just a lot of people gone now from these jobs, and the jobs suck, and people don't want them. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. So, buy, pre-order your comics. Buy your comics. Uh, make sure you get stuff. Um, yeah. Don't be annoyed if things are delayed. Don't be annoyed if things are sold out. There's literally nothing we can do. Companies can't do anything. The companies make money when they sell us stuff. We make money when we sell you stuff. Nobody wants this. Everybody wants as much stuff as possible. Uh, it just it's going to be tight. You know what? You know what? I, you know what killed us? It's that huge surge of omnibuses that they decided to like try and reprint and catch up I on don't- and. I don't know yeah, like, where Marvel's finding a printer for these wait, things, man. Like, just wait, guys. Like, that's too many omnibuses. They, like, slow it they down. Are, you, you sucked all the paper. They are absolutely cranking them out still, and I don't. But but then they are delaying well, some comics. You know what that proves? So I, you know, you know what that proves? Marvel doesn't print on paper. It just prints on garbage. It's there's something going on with that. Uh, for the comics, they sure do. Uh, yeah, Yo, I, I just don't know what the. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, what to do. I mean, they must have some uh, omnibuses must be made internationally. Those aren't made in Canada. Those are made in the U.S. Those are made overseas. So they must still have access to the paper. It's just going to be. It's just going to take a while. So that's all I got. Yeah, and I think uh, that thing with the U.K. I think Big Bang Comics tw- like tweeted something about that. Yeah, but they're being out I of paper. Like, yeah. 
We got some. I don't know. I got I got my something is killing the children's slipcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the few we got. <laughs> so we ordered. Uh, you know, we ordered significantly uh, heavy on that, and we got very few. So yeah, this is just the way it's going to be for a little while. Talk about another comic here, uh, Iron Fist. I know a, a favorite of at least one person on this podcast. Um, <laughs> Kevin's like, I mean, I like, you like Iron, Iron Fist. Fist you like Iron Fist? I like Kevin. Iron Fist yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. You? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, you like Iron Fist. Um, the, the 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 conversation around Iron Fist, obviously, when when the Marvel show came out, was who's this white guy? Uh, I mean, that is Iron Fist, but clearly the representation of, of Asian Americans in cinema and television is minimal. It's, you know, clearly something they're trying to grow. A lot of people thought, okay, well maybe making iron fist Asian would make more sense to be a little bit more, you know, maybe sen- culturally sensitive, make a little bit more sense within the context, even though the character, so they're making even though Shang-Chi? Danny Rand is, well, yeah, even though Danny Rand is, is not, but you know, Uh, Well, what if they just created a new Iron Fist? Uh, We don't know who this is, but there is a new person taking over the role. Danny Rand has has exited the mantle of Iron Fist. And so there is a a new person that will be replacing him. Um, Younger. If his uh, his uh, name is Ryan. uh, Ryan? I don't think so. Um, They don't don't know who it is. Ryan Choi? Oh, yeah, no. The Adam? No. The other Adam? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, We don't know who he is, but... um, does somewhat appear it's seemingly it's a, it's a mostly Asian uh, creative team. And uh, the, it did much more heavily Asian influence uh, of the character's look. So it, more than likely he is, he is Asian. And this was one of the questions, you know, when we looked at, you know, how does, cause eventually daredevil, iron fist, Luke cage, Jessica Jones, Punisher, uh, Kingpin, Defenders, these things will come to the Marvel Universe, the Marvel, you know, uh, Disney Plus shows, just because that's just, it's, they're untapped. Because the mouse is vicious and will get everything back. Oh, it's not everything back. It had them. It's it's not getting them back. It's just, let's make these now part of our, you know, our, 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 over, our you know, overarching kind of company. You know, I, people want Charlie Cox and Daredevil and that stuff to be in continuity, but I just don't think it is. Uh, so this, if if I had to guess, it, we'll be seeing Iron Fist sooner than later in the Marvel universe, and it's gonna be this guy. So this this feels to me like that's how they they solve that problem. They're like, well, we just have another person be Iron Fist, and they could be Asian if it's in good with uh, Shang Chi, and then we can just have our, you know, then then there's. Here's the character. This is the character you guys wanted. So, uh, you know, I, I I expect Danny Rand will stick around and come back. And I'm sure, them, you know, either this doesn't take off or if they, uh, you know. Uh, Who's freaking out about it? Uh, I didn't look. I'm sure someone. Yeah, I'm sure somebody. But with, with this, with a case like this, Iron Fist is the skin color of Iron Fist is not intrinsic to the character. Right. So it, changing him to Asian changes really nothing yeah yeah it is a it is a rare character that can be passed that the the power can be passed down um you know i think like in a similar fashion you know right dr strange right i I mean that is he is not the first he's not he won't be the last you know other people can take that can take the, the that power you know this isn't you know, Iron Man or Spider Man. Ready for that because it's the death of Doctor Strange right now. So oh. they're getting ready to replace. Yeah, him. there are some characters, you know, that that it would be a little bit odd, but but yeah, Iron Fist is a character where I feel that that transfer works a little bit better yeah. because it is a given like title. Mm. So uh, like yeah, we'll a, see. A white Luke Cage would not work. Yeah. Because the char- that's part of the character's like whole identity, whereas this is someone who has this po- martial arts power. Well, Luke Cage is also like like literally that's his name, <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. the person. It, it 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 you couldn't really 
tr- you can't like transfer. I mean, you can make someone else get the same accident or whatever. You know, well, like yeah. there's a, th- a thousand people have been bitten by radioactive spiders at this point, and there's a whole army of them. But it isn't like oh, the spider god has handed down <laughs> the the Spider Man power to I, Peter Parker, and now it goes on to another person. No, like, like the Iron Fist is like a thing that can go like to someone yeah, else. Yeah, I think I so. meant less about Luke Cage's power than right. like the local hero of Harlem, who's the protector right, right. of this neighborhood. Right. Like that isn't, like T'Challa, you wouldn't make an Asian Black Panther. It yeah. changes, but Iron, all this is a long way of saying, I yeah. when because Brock said, who's freaking out? I can't imagine anybody freaking out. But then again, this is the internet. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, it's a change to uh, a comic book. Yeah, of course, of course. Somebody is freaking out. Clearly someone is, but this but this is this is their way of 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 solving the Iron Fist problem yeah. for what will probably be a MCU TV show or introduce him in the Young Avengers or do something like that. Now, I, you know, of course, five years from now. 10 years from now, Danny Rand can be back on the comics and everything's fine and everything's back to normal, you know, but it, this is a way to introduce that character into the movie. I, I just, I have to assume that's what this is. That's, that's why they're doing this. Um, you know, the, the comic characters will continue. And, and again, maybe Daredevil is a little bit harder because it's well received, you know, Oh, I didn't hate the iron fish show. I thought it was, I thought it was just fine. Um, because the show was so, uh, um, poorly received is probably also easier for them to like make him the first one to get to, 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 to come over. Now as um, a comic store owner, how would your anticipation be for the sales of a new iron fist comic? The I mean, they've done okay. The last few have done pretty decent that there, there's not a lot of Marvel books right now that are just like tanking for us. This new Shang-Chi series is sold really well. Um, right. We've sold out of every issue. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I'm not ordering it like I order Spider-Man or Batman or something like that, but but a couple of years ago it would have been like five copies, you know. It's it's <laughs> it you would know, have been sub only. Iron Fist is was selling thirty copies, which, you know, again, it's not huge, but it's better than you know, it's more than two, you know. It's it's that's that that that's pretty solid mid tier character. Yeah, yeah. And again, I think this this series will do. You know, we'll, we'll kind of cue number one, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But I, I expect the series to be pretty good. Iron Fist is a popular character, especially someone else coming in and uh, um, someone else coming in and, and working on it. Uh, one other thing, we have some questions, but we got one other topic to talk about. Eh, it's a short one, but uh, something I was looking forward to. Um, then we'll move over to to some questions. Uh, James Wan director of, of Aquaman and the upcoming Aquaman 2 uh, posted on Instagram about uh, the, the trench movie that was supposed to happen that got scrapped along with a bunch of planned Snyder era DC movies. Uh, and he says, I'll let you in on a secret. The canceled trench spinoff movie was really going to be a secret black Manta movie. And uh, they have a, they were showing off the, the, the new, um, Cost the new head for for um, for Black Manta kind of a did it get bigger slightly? Yeah, it doesn't no it, the the I'm because they have actually another image here of the other of, of the one from the previous one. It looks more oval and the eyes look bigger. The head might be a little bit smaller, but the eyes look like they take up more space and they kind of go around the sides a little bit more. I like that they're super accurate to the comic with, with Black Manta's helmet. Like, yeah. they could have done something completely different, but they're like, no, we're going to give him this big, yeah. <laughs> big, it's, big yeah. helmet. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, there was... um. There was talk too of uh, in a, uh, uh, Ava DuVernay's and um, uh, Tom King was working on that too. The, um, uh, the 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 New Gods movie. She also had made some mention that um, uh, uh, that basically the Snyder cut killed that movie too. That that you know uh, they're like we are going to take a nice break from Dark Side, and unfortunately you can't really do a New Gods movie without Dark Side. <laughs> Uh, so, so, um, that's very, very disappointing. Both of those are very disappointing, but it's like, okay, that's, I mean, that's, that's fine, I guess. 
you know, there's a lot of good DC stuff coming up. I'm not too worried about it. Well, and plus all of the stories that have been out about HBO desperately looking for their next Game of Thrones. And so they're doing two other Game of Thrones series. But it seems like you've got a perfect property sitting right there with all oh. of the giant, the themes, the warring mm-hmm. families, the strange creatures, the different storylines. It's it's it, since they chose to do Dune theatrically, which I think would have also been a great series adaptation oh yeah yeah the new gods is it's you you have the property it's sitting right there you don't have to go out and search for anything you own yeah. it maybe they will i mean maybe that's why they, cr- they scrapped the movie right we don't know I, I know there was talk from the green lantern director that green lantern is uh some time off so uh, uh green lantern is going to be a while it's in a it's in a galaxy closer to oa uh yeah, yeah. but they uh um it's going to be a while for, for Green Lantern. So, yeah, maybe they're kind of redoing some of the TV. Just kind of kind of readjusting what they're going to do in TV. And now a New Gods, a New Gods movie, especially if they took Tom King's um, Mr. Miracle as sort of a bit of an inspiration. You can have the Earth stuff, the, the New Gods oh, stuff. Yeah, totally. yeah. You actually I mean, go back to those early Jack Kirby issues. Now, nobody's going to sit and argue that the dialogue is great and Kirby's a great, like, literal word to word writer, but he's a great storyteller. And you could take those first, I want to say maybe six, trying to remember how many now, six, seven early Kirby issues, update the scripting, obviously change the slang and the dialogue and stuff like that. But as a story template, there's your season one right there, right there. You've got the pact, the switching of the two babies You've got the the invasion, the bug invasion of Earth. You've got the introduction of Darkseid and High Father and everybody else. It's I don't know. It seems like it's sitting right there. I, maybe there's something that none of us know. I mean, obviously there's something none of us know, but yeah. I don't know. Feature film just seems like a strange way to go for the new gods because what story are you going to tell that can feature all of those characters and none of them kind of get shut uh, sh- uh it's easy for me to say. Shunt it off to the side. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you you really simplify Dark Side High Father. Yeah, you know, you make it an smart. opening credit sequence instead of a yeah a story. yeah. They, they, it starts with 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 uh, with the kids growing up and 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 um, you you flash back to to what happened yeah in, you know, the switch and all that stuff and, but i mean brock you read that new uh, that mr miracle story hyman my favorite issue oh yeah that like that could amazing. be that could be its own episode here's young oh, yeah. scot free yeah. in the orphanage you do it like mm-hmm. lost where you've yeah. got the story and then you tell certain the backstory of how we got here okay yeah. well anyway we'll see it we'll seems see. too maybe it's too obvious <laughs> They it, it, they don't want to take the easy road, which is the obvious road, which is the road they should take in the first place. They want to go down the road that looks convoluted, a pain in the ass, and is going to get them nowhere. Well, again, none of us are writing the checks, so maybe there's some yeah, thought yeah. about. <laughs> like, hey, the, but the, for the, some the, odd reason, things happen when we talk about them. So, yeah, maybe maybe somebody's uh, we're in somebody's ear, like Mister Mind. I doubt it, but we'll see. I'm still excited for for a bunch of uh, still excited for a bunch of stuff on uh, from DC. So you know, it's a billion movies already, a billion TV shows. Um, actually, uh, someone did ask a question. Hold on, let me find it. Um, or is it? Dun, 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 dun. So we're going to questions, questions, questions. That's what we're doing. If I could find it, hey, here we go. Um, uh, it was in there somewhere. Uh, this is from Anthony. He says, "I'd love to hear your thoughts on Doom Patrol." The show is about introduction of the characters and team. How close is it to the comics? <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say that, you know, uh, with all these shows now getting more seasons and yeah, uh, if they're willing to do four seasons of Doom Patrol, I think New Gods is just a, not even a question. Like it's I'm not going to say it's easier. It's obviously a bigger story, a bigger scope. Uh, but, but if, if if you can make people figure out Doom Patrol, you can. <laughs> New Gods is pretty simple, so. You uh, but have a bunch of swearing. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't seen any of season three of Doom Patrol. Yeah, I, I haven't started the season either. Um, 
I've watched a couple episodes. I, I need to I need to get back on it. So what's but the I, answer to his question? It, it's kind of a, the first two. It's kind of a um, combination of the Grant Morrison run and the the Young Animal run. Yeah, yeah. I think those are obviously the the main inspiration. You know, I, I, well, I think the Grant Morrison run is the inspiration for Gerard Way's yeah. run. So therefore, it's kind of that. But yeah, it's it, it draws mostly from the Morrison run. I think it is. Yeah, no, I, like I read the first, uh, like that they have that three volumes in the soft cover. I read the first one uh, after watching the first season, and yeah, it's pretty accurate to like what's going on in that story. It's it's just re- like the ridiculousness of everything that's going on. You're just like, yeah, I'm a, I'm along. Yeah, I'm going. This ride is taking me wherever it's going, and I'm on it. So, yeah, but no. Well, yeah, it's it is as shockingly accurate as I think it could be. They they are the characters. They are the personalities. They are the the plots from the Morrison run as close as I think it more, more more close than I think I thought I'd ever see you translated. (laughs) Uh, You know, they, they clearly do different stuff, but it's um, uh, what's the, uh, what's the chief's daughter. Um, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, season two. You know you what I'm mean, talking about. The little girl, yeah, who, like has the disfigured face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just blanking on her name. Um, that I, I did not expect them to do that arc at all. Right. Uh, uh all the stuff at Danny Street again. Just, right. just <laughs> that is a complicated character. Oh, I en- love the Danny en- enough, Street stuff. And they just That's do it straight. Um, no pun intended. They just do it straight in the show. Yep. And uh. Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. It's pretty and, crazy. And Danny evolves. Like oh, yeah. he evolves in the yeah. comics and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh from Ivan, he says, um, uh, what do you see yourself more of a fan of lately with overall consumption in mind? A fan of superheroes, regardless of the medium. So you like the games, the shows, the radio dramas, or a fan of comic books. Regardless of the genre, oh, that's a tough one. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's both. I I can't not say both, really. Well, just pick one as like a fifty-one forty-nine to play um, with this question. It'll be it'll be it'll be superheroes for Ryan because you don't read that much independent right now. It's more of a time thing than uh than a, than a want thing. But I, but I do like, uh, I do end up trying, I try to watch a lot of the shows. So I wouldn't say superheroes, regardless of the medium. I'd almost say comic book stuff, regardless of the medium. Um, Cause I, I will watch the shows uh, and the movies where, uh, you know, but I also read like a, like a hundred comic books a more a month. Like, so it's not like I'm not reading anything either. I already fuck load of comic books too. Uh, but there are just so many TV shows and movies these days. It's, it's, I can't watch everything, uh, which is a good problem to have, I guess. Cause at the before just, we were starving for anything. Right. And now it's like there's just so much stuff. I mean, now yeah, I'm a superhero fan. I love superhero stuff, but I love non superhero comics too. But I, the majority of the stuff I read is superhero yeah, focused. What when we started this podcast, it was Green Arrow. My Arrow, Arrow. That was it. Like, yeah. I mean, there was animated stuff, and you know, the very the very beginning yeah. of the MCU movies. But uh, but yeah, it was just Arrow was yeah. just kind of yeah, like Smallville had had just ended. Yeah. I think it ended when we were like, it ended early. I think when we first started recording. Well, um, what's your answers to the question? Me? Uh, I would say comic books. Yeah. I, mean, I just, yeah, I'm I, reading a lot. Like I'm reading a lot of comics and like, I watch a lot of comic shows. Like it's not necessarily that I'm doing it based on the, who, you know, like the superhero stuff. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm all over, all over the place. I'd so. say comics too. If you say my ratio of comics I read to comic related stuff that I watch is probably like 10 to one in favor of reading more than watching. Yeah. So Ryan answer your question. Smallville ended 
like two months after we started recording the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So no, I remember we talked about it when it ended. Yeah, an hour it was like shortly after. Yeah. But Kevin, you were a you were a a, a movie and TV show buff. So yeah, I'm just saying most just of the stuff that I watch isn't comic related stuff. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, and that's sort of the problem I get with like Legends of Tomorrow, where I'm like, well, <laughs> this has ceased to be a comic book thing. <laughs> I kind of don't care about it anymore. It's fine, but I'm just like, it's gone just so off from what it was. There was there was a chance for it to kind of like, okay, well, it's kind of the fun in that Doctor Who way, and that's cool, but it. We're, we're at the point where they turn into the things we hate. It's like What's the it? superhero. To, you Eventually, you're a hero or you turn into the villain, right? That's the part we're in. All the shows are turning into the villains. Well, most of them are just ending. Um, I don't know. How's Flash? Legends is... Oh, last season was dreadful. But but <laughs> I'm, I, I got, I'm hopeful for this season because they're going to do that five-part... Um, no, no. Five you're part only hopeful over, because so. he's getting yellow boots. Oh, so that's wait, cool, too. Legends of Tomorrow is just fine and you've long since stopped caring about it so that means you're not watching anymore correct it is on <laughs> see i am i'm still technically watching last season i haven't even started this season yet i am I, I i mean i didn't watch the entire last season i'm watching it now as the new season is airing so that's how far back i am on it and i am uh uh generally very distracted when the show is on it's not very good uh this season like it was f- fine, to, I guess. Now two seasons ago, this last season is not very good. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the one where Constantine and Hell and uh no 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 they're back no they're fighting aliens they uh they 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 that that dancing singing man clones uh what. Yeah, the dancing singing guy that dances and sings a lot. That wears a bunch of nice suits. It's it's like infinite clones of himself. I, I don't. I have no idea who this guy is or where he came from or what his deal is or why anything exists about this guy. But he huh? cloned. He cloned. Uh, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You find out the guy. You find out what's his face. The the uh, <laughs> uh, shit. <sighs> Keep talking because this is great radio. What is what the <laughs> hell is her name? Okay. You know what I'm really like Canary, White Canary's White Canary's girlfriend, <laughs> the clone, the clone lady, right? Clone lady. <laughs> right? Right? It's our new weekly feature. Ryan summarizes a show. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> like the best. Okay, you know White Canary, right? <laughs> you're you're yes. you're you're yes. talking you're talking about okay. Sarah Lance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Her girlfriend. Her girlfriend, right? Who is right. the, the the clone? Who is Jess McCollin, Ava Sharp. Ava, yes, the clone, correct? She okay, is a remember? clone, yes. Okay. There's like I a, a guy that has a bunch of her other clones, and he's also like a clone, and he sings and dances a lot, and wears and wears suits. And then what? Yeah, I mean, you haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. Like this plot just kind of comes out of nowhere, and they kidnap her, and they clone her, and make her like this like ultimate human, and then you find out that. Gary, the her Ava's assistant guy, that he's been an alien this whole time, and so now he's now he's an alien for some reason, and yeah, Keep and going, they're, man, this is and, great, and, and they 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 like launch a bunch of alien pods into into like space time, and now they're going through space time trying to like track down where these aliens are, and it's just like. You guys have not. You guys have just stopped being a superhero show like two seasons ago. It's just very, very strange. It's you know very what's strange. amazing about the last five minutes? So I have Remember. never seen an episode of Legends of Tomorrow. Never, not mm-hmm. one. But mm-hmm. sitting here listening to this, it really takes me back to. I'm going to call it maybe age ten in the school cafeteria with your friends, just like making up some bullshit story where everybody's <laughs> just spitballing because it sounds like this is all. This I know all it real. sounds like something. Oh, and then and then there's a clone. But he sings and dances. Oh, but wait, then the other guy's a secret alien. Oh, no, 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 but wait, what if there's another clone, too? It just, it, it wait, sounds is like. is this the character that Matt Ryan is playing? No, no, no. 
No, I haven't got to that. I know, I know he's no longer Constantine. I don't know what to do what? with that is. Yeah, he's yeah. no longer Constantine. He's like, a, he's like another character now because he loses his powers, and so well, I, the 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 girl that was in Constantine is now an adult because she like ages Astra. up in hell. Astra, yeah, she she takes the power. And now she's the magician and Constantine isn't. I, I, but I haven't finished the seasons. I don't know what happens to him. Um, I, don't know. I tried Googling dancing guy on Legends of, D- on, on Legends of Tomorrow <laughs> and nothing good came up. So who knows? It's just, yeah, it's just, about. it's just, it's, he's just the guy that kidnaps Sarah and he dances and sings a lot. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I tell thought you. he kidnapped uh, Ava. No, no, no. He kidnaps Sarah. It makes her like clones her and makes her like this like ultimate human because she is like the perfect human. And he like mixes her with the alien DNA and now she can regenerate. She gets like shot in the head and she just like regenerates from it. So now she's freaking out because she's like half alien. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's just like, oh, God. Yeah, it was. It's, it's been rough. It's been rough. All right. Hold on. I'm I'm, I'm at. No, you don't have to look up anything. Don't no, have yeah, to look up anything. Let, no, no. We're going to no. move over to Mike. We're going to move to Mike's yeah. question. Mike says, everyone seems to be aware of Free Comic Book Day, but Halloween Comic Fest never seems to get much attention. Why is that? Because they come in bundles of 10 or 20, and you have to buy them like that. They didn't even do them this year. And they're garbage. So so Free Comic Book Day is a, kind of a national celebration of comic books. It's been going on for like 20 years. Like I said, almost years. national holiday, but you held back. <laughs> it's a... So it's a, it's a national celebration of comics. It's um, a national nerddom holiday. They tried to basically make like a second free comic book day called Halloween Comic Fest. And I actually appreciate the idea. The idea was let's make some like mini comics so people can like give them out to kids for, yeah. for Halloween. And I think that's actually a cool idea. But it is. It's not free comic day. You're not going to do it twice. Uh, they are all reprints, uh, I believe, as far as when they've done them, they did package them kind of weird. They would come like a pack of like 20. It wasn't like, I don't, you couldn't really like buy just like one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a cool idea, but it just never got traction. We never did it at the store. Nobody ever cared. Well, Nobody I ever think asked. it's because it was just how it was advertised, right? Like instead of advertising it as give out comics for Halloween, you can order them through your local comic book store and their new Halloween stories for whatever, right? Just cute little quick things or whatever, or dark things or, you know, however you want to do it. Um, instead of being that, they were just like, yeah, it's Halloween, local comic shop Halloween day. Yeah. I mean, it's, like I said, it's a new free. idea. It's just... They're free, maybe. Like... Well, you, you again, like the free comic day stuff, you can buy them, right? I mean, so it's not like it, they have to be as expensive. As long as you want a bundle of 20. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they're cheap enough. The idea is to give them away, but yeah, just it just it just never turned into anything. Um, I, I think the why is just because there's been, you know, there's, there's already a free comic day. This isn't there, uh, there, there's a way for it's us free to comic day, right? So it's a way for us. Well, to yeah, now it's get rid of it. Yeah, this year I think Marvel's the only one that ended up giving anything out, and it was just that I think they maybe already had them printed or something. So I'm not sure why. But uh, from Craig, Craig Anderson, oh, he's got a great that question. Guy. He says, because we got Marvel's Dark Ages, DC vs. Vampires, Task Force X, sorry, Task Force Z, Z. Death of Doctor Strange, Inferno, and other limited miniseries are all right now, are all out right now. Um, of those and more, what are the ones should be reading? Well, Craig, the answer is all of them, of course. <laughs> subscribe to all and never unsubscribe. <laughs> so just buy them all. Uh, I have uh, not read the Vampires book, DC Vampires. I have not read Task Force Z. Oh, I mean, I haven't read a single issue of any of these yet. They're all in my <laughs> pile to read. So, I mean, I mean, uh, DC vs. Vampire Task Force Z just came out. Right, Dark Ages, uh, uh, Death of Doctor Strange, and Inferno. I'll just read when they're done. Um, I'm, I'm, oh my god, this guy is great at advertising free people. I just books and buy books right away. I finally finished <laughs> um, Hickman's X Men. How how are you doing, boy? What a long walk to nowhere that that <laughs> is. It just, oh boy, did. did did you get from house 
to powers. I got no, I got nothing. I got from like, nothing to nothing. Like nothing happens. Like fucking nothing happens. Did was it ever so, explained about the orgies and the reason uh, that that Scott and uh, Logan have door access to Gene's to Gene's apartment? No, no. Okay. I'm finishing up the the stuff leading up to um to um uh what is it the um it's called whatever thing they just did that nobody cares about. It wasn't swords. The, the dance recital thing they just did. What the hell is it called? The hell is the <laughs> oh, thing the called? Hellfire Gala. Hellfire Gala. There you go. <laughs> the there you recital. go. So I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And then Inferno. And then Inferno will be will be next. Uh, you know, Inferno and, and X Men. Is there any um, dancing in Elf in, a, in Inferno? But they're all like, you know, DC vs. Vampires and Test for Z are, are more especially one-off miniseries and, and, and um, Otto well, Schmidt. I mean, his art alone is worth it for DC for uh, vampires. Art's incredible. Um, DC's doing what they're not supposed to do and do have vampires and zombies at the same time. They're supposed to rotate them. It's people, everything. It's Halloween. No, you just, it's, you know, you got to rotate them, man. Dark ages is like a kind of out of continuity sort of its own little book. So, but it's Tom Taylor. I mean, great. Is that team, just, so. Is that now? I've only seen like a house ad for it. I think yeah. it looks just like Marvel sixteen oh two, but with magic. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't comment on, on no, no. I what, but I mean, is it plot, is, but it's just, is the premise like the superheroes, but in no old olden times no, instead for dark of ages? <laughs> no, no, no. Like literally, like 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 the power goes out. Everywhere, like it's not like they don't like travel. Oh, I thought I saw a picture of somebody with a sword, and it looked like a sword and sorcery. Are you you talking about the Justice League Incarnate thing that's coming out? That's the there's the there's the yes, no, that is. I think I'm thinking of something else. You're thinking thinking of of dark, the no Justice League Incarnate thing. No, no, no. Justice League Incarnate is the um is the multiverse book that follows um Infinite Frontier. You're talking about dark um uh uh. Um, it's the other Tom Taylor book. It's um, yeah. What, what, we're, we're doing really well with, uh, with names. <laughs> I give me a second. I'm pulling it up. No, it comes up this week. Um, I'm just well, my name is just completely. Um, um uh, Dark Knight to Steel. No, no, no. Yeah, Dark yes, Knight to Steel. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. That that is Dark Knight. Sorry, just so many names of the stuff for now. Dark Ages is the Marvel book, which is like. The power. The power goes yes, out. Yes. yes. Like it's that's that. Dark Knights Dark Knights of Steel. Dark Knights of Steel. Yeah. That is the Sword and Sorcery Elseworld yeah. DC book. Yes. Okay. They both are cool for different different reasons. Yes. Um but all the miniseries from DC, this stuff is all very self contained. It's all its own thing. The Marvel ones are all the big crossover and the event books right now. So Inferno and Death of Doctor Strange. That's don't forget Darkhold. So, yeah, those are just like a series of one shots. Like they did that with um, they did that with the Extreme Carnage and and all those where there. It's not like it, it's like it's like a mini. It's like a it's like a mini series of one shots. They're kind of formatted and weird. Um, so it just depends on what you want. Uh, I like the standalone stuff, but I also love the big events. So Justice League Incarnate is part of. Uh, uh, Infinite Frontier, Justice League yeah. Incarnate, Crisis 2022, 2023, whatever that ends up being. That's that's that track, and that's actual. Although it's multiverse, that's in continuity. That's the event book for DC. Whereas DC vs. Vampires and Task Force Z and all that other stuff is. Well, I, I actually. Is Task Force Z a miniseries? I thought that may have been an ongoing. Um, it's an maybe, ongoing until we just choose to make it a mini. That's Marvel. Um, Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Task Force E is just a miniseries. I don't know. But yeah, uh, but like Death of Doctor Strange and Inferno, and um, there's another one that's out right now that I'm. There's another kind of like mini event book. But I just I just don't have a list in front of me. I'm drawing a blank on it. Um, yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. You know, if you like the self-contained out of continuity stuff, DC. If you like the big event book. Right now, that's Marvel. So they're they're really they're both doing their own thing. DC doesn't have a big event book right now. Not not Task Force not is like, an ongoing. Yeah, I thought it was an ongoing. Yeah, um, th- there's no big event book going on for for uh, DC right now. Not in the way of like you know multiple crossovers and everything. There's uh, there's Sphere stated at, at um, 
for the Batman crossover, but that's really it. Where Marvel like, has, they no also Man's, have like No Man's Land or it's no, no, big. no Man's Land was huge. No, 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 Man's no, Land. no, but like it's the Bat Family crossover like thing. It's yeah, what, like, it's it's yeah. it's everything has Fear State if it's Batman related, right? Yeah, now. Fear State is very very small compared to something yeah. like that. Um, Fear State's only like one month of crossovers, um, or like two months of crossovers. Uh, but Marvel also has like we were talking earlier, Kevin, about um like Fantastic Four, uh, Life Story, and you know Dark Ages, and they have all these other books that are just very self contained, uh, not really continuity miniseries. Oh, that reminds me, Kevin. Uh, I actually, I try to, I went to back order another copy because I think I need a copy for myself. Are you picking this up? Um, talking about Fantastic Four, uh, the Chip Kid Fantastic Four panel by panel book that's coming out. You seen this? No. Oh, look this up. It is uh, like a 200 something page book examining every panel of Fantastic Four number one. <laughs> it comes out next week, panel by panel. Look this up. It looks incredible. Wow. Yeah. Very cool looking. I really want, like, we have a couple coming at the store. I really want one of these for myself. Uh, this looks awesome. Chip Kevin, Kid is an incredible designer. Right now, Wednesday books. Put it down. You're good. Yeah. All right, well, next, thanks for the tip. I, I somehow had never heard of this. Yeah, look it up. It looks really up your alley. Um, I was I saw some preview pages and it looks pretty pretty cool. It's a huge blow blow up of every panel, panel by panel, with like an examination of the panel of what's going on in the artwork and the story and hmm. yeah, it's all right. Uh, temporary art, uh, I think, like kind of co writes it with them or or or, or at least um, contributes to it. It looks really neat. Uh, from. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'll say Jesus. Sounds right. I love Future Quest. Do you guys think we'll get more Hanna Barbera characters crossing over with each other? Oh, I just want more crossover stuff in comics in general. I want more Marvel and DC crossovers. I want more Star Trek and Legion. Uh, Star Green Lantern and Legion or Green Lantern and Star Trek. Those are really fun. Um, I like those those Future Quest uh, or the Hanna Barbera crossover stuff that they did. The little one shots. The Looney Tunes ones were super good. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just very, very funny. I, I, I want more of that stuff. I don't know what we're going to, but they're very cool. Does it wasn't that Doc Shaner the art on Future Quest? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Jeff yep. Parker? Yeah, or, Jeff Parker. Yeah. Both Jeff Parker wrote it. Right, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. both of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That Future Quest is cool. I, Herculoids, I'm a big fan of. So <laughs> it was cool that they kind of they kind of showed up. I like that they were they were part of that. Uh. Some Hanna Barbera stuff I'm a little I kind of I'm not as familiar with as as some other characters, um, but but there are ones that I uh, but I definitely like some of them. Like Space Ghost, I've never really been a big fan of. Um, uh, Johnny Quest, I've never really been a big fan of. Like they, they're like they're fine, but I just yeah I kind of gravitated gravitated a little bit towards a few of the other. Uh, more more minor characters, but they're neat. They they do they do good, uh, cool jobs with that. Um, they do a good job with that. Um, that uh, that um, I said future state. What the hell is it? Uh, future future quest. Future was those future quest books. But yeah, I need some more Batman Porky Pig crossover. I need another volume of that. I need another Blue Falcon and Dynamut. <laughs> was that? Who did they have crossover with? That was the Super Sons. Oh yeah, that's right. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty. That, that was a pretty good one shot. I mean, but that was dark. I mean, mm-hmm. Future State was very like Silver Agey, light and fun. Those Hanna Barbera, like the Elmer Fudd and the Dynamite and stuff. Some of them, some, not all. Of them, no, not but, all. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. they were more of a mixed, uh, different tones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, a couple more questions. Before we get out of here, uh, from Chris. Oh, Chris Noise. Uh, what would you say has been your biggest change in your comic reading life? Uh, for I example, read as much. <laughs> well, he says, for example, he was mostly a Marvel reader, but then switched to mostly DC. Hmm. I mean, I kind of, I kind of, when I was more limited in what I could read and buy, I did sort of have to kind of pick. I was definitely more into Marvel than than more into DC, but now it's. I mean, obviously, mostly into DC, but I read everything. I, mm-hmm. I, I it's easier for me to read some more stuff now. Um, 
I don't know. I, I feel like I haven't made any major changes to what I've been getting. I think the availability of stuff has changed what I've bought. I get more graphic novels now because I get more of the omnibuses and epic collections. I think if you go back to early 2000s, mid 2000s, they just didn't do a lot of that stuff. They were out there a little bit, but my problem with like the 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 reprints, especially for like the Marvel uh, stuff, was that they were sort of like, yeah, we're gonna reprint the Silver Age stuff. But that's kind of it. Now we're getting into like 80s and 90s reprints that they're you know that are a little closer to stuff that I had just missed or or I started reading at first. So I like that they they're. they're um, especially, I mean, we've talked about the Epic Collections and, and the Omnibuses on there regularly. Uh, yeah, I think there's just, um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more aimed at picking up the old stuff that way, where I was getting some of the single issues, but I like the collections now a little bit more. I mean, I've always got them, but it's a little bit more of a focus on what I'm picking up. I'd say there was a stretch of time for me early earlier 2000s where, I would try to get almost every n- new number one from an indie publisher if it looked at all interesting. That's impossible now. But now, <laughs> now it's just like it, no, that even image. I couldn't even do it for image by itself. Now it's just too much. Yeah, you pick up ten new books a month. Yeah, so I'm way, uh, way more picky with that. I mean, there used to be like I do remember when I was first working at that shop when I lived in Massachusetts, and again, I was a kid. I I distinctly remember customers coming in and 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 they would say I want to sign up for every new number 1. And now think about it this is like 92, right? <laughs> so the 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 boom has already it, yeah. you, we are in full full expansion of the industry yeah. now. And they'd come in and one week would be like 20 number ones it's like here's the creeper like here's showcase 92 number one here's dark hold here's uh like uh, air boy from dark horse hair you know like oh it my was, god I've- <laughs> it's just this like mass of yeah. stuff and they're like what the hell like like this is what you asked for you asked for every number one it's a lot of shit. Yeah. It's a lot of garbage. I mean, the, the 80s were probably even worse. I mean, it would have been. But by the 90s, it was still a lot of nonsense. Uh, yeah, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. I still remember the customer. I think I've mentioned it before on here. The customer we used to have, a longtime regular customer when I worked at a store, who used to always come in with short boxes. Every time he'd come in, he'd have a short box. Or not every time, but he'd regularly come in with a short box and it was always full of really nice, um, we're talking like minimum condition VG and up from there, Silver Age books. And he would just trade them all in for store credit and all he would use his store credit on was new comics. (laughs) So he'd come in with a short box, give it all to us, fill it with new comics and walk out with with his store credit. And I would just, even back then, I would look, we would look at each other and be like, what are we missing here? Like, <laughs> now it just seems pure insanity. But even back yeah, then, it yeah. was just like, man, because he buy everything like you were just saying. It's like, wow, I'm not sure that adolescent radioactive black metal hamster number 17 <laughs> is going to quite give you the value for that <laughs> FF number 10 you literally just handed off to us. Yeah. I have a customer, Robert, that I've I've said for years because he's talking about wanting to get rid of his stuff. I'm like, dude, you could bring me a short box a month and you'd never have to buy another comic. You'd never have to pay for another yeah. comic again. Like I know he's got you know pretty pretty big runs of stuff. Not like not like Deep Silver Age, but he's he's got good runs of of, of books. And I'm like, dude, if you really need to clean out, just yeah, you'll never need to worry about buying another comic again. We'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it's. I know I started like when I was younger, I liked Marvel. Um, it, you know, I like Marvel. I like Batman. But as I started re- getting back into comics 15 years ago, you know, I was I was reading Marvel and kind of DC and then a little bit more here DC. And then now it's more like DC and, and, and independent. Like I, my independent has definitely increased. My reading of non-superhero books has definitely increased a lot. Um. Which, you know, there's a lot of great content out there that is not 
superhero related in comics that I think gets kind of brushed under the rug, uh, you know. Oh, because again, well, I mean, there's a lot of it. I mean, so many people are read the indie stuff is blown up so big. A lot of it's speculation, but but people are reading it. it you know, people aren't speculating 20 issues in the run. So, I, I mean, there is a lot of good stuff out there now. But yeah, I mean, the superhero stuff is just going to, you know, it's always going to kind of be the, the best selling stuff, you know, on a regular basis. It's just people get connected to the world and the universe and, and it's hard to kind of break free of that. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always, I, I read a lot of indie number ones that, and that's, it's just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. And yeah, this boy, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's tough. Uh, from, uh, uh, prison gray on Twitter. He says, I love tiny ends, independent work. Like, um, um, something that's killing children and wind and his work on detective and justice league dark. What are your thoughts about Batman? I'm underwhelmed. He said, so it's the, the main Batman book. Uh, I'm not caught up. Yeah, I'm like maybe two issues back. Uh, you are way more caught up than I am. Wh- where, how far are you? I have a long box plus three bags. <clears throat> Good lord. Yeah, the Batman was double shipping through a lot of that. So yeah, so I mean probably, for like 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 eight. Joker War stuff. Oh yeah, so you're not. I mean, you're not like you know like a like twelve. I'm you know, probably like, about. I mean, if you look at all of my books, I'm about four months behind. Ah, yeah, it's like, not that, but it's like i'm reading like when i read i read in chunks so i'm like okay i yeah, got yeah, caught yeah, up yeah. on this yeah yeah and then by the time i get back to it it's now up to like three months so it's yeah, like i just need to once my life settles down again I can, yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah i could be like all right let me let me get back on a routine of reading here yeah yeah <laughs> um i i i <sighs> i think if you're gonna write batman i think this goes to any major superhero um it needs to find a good balance between new and old. I think you should always have new characters and new villains, but then I think there's people do like the old ones. I think Tiny and Run's been a little too leaning uh, uh, on the new stuff, and it's uh, like Batman's kind of almost not in his own book. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of stuff with Punchline and Joker War, and that's a little bit different. That was clearly very Batman heavy, but well, the last yeah, couple stuff. arcs. Leading to future state, like it's very yeah. kind of yeah. But even that, but it's kind of not even like that. I mean, the all the stuff with the peacekeeper is, um, but it, but that's sort of its own thing. I I, I think there it, it's it's too much Ghost Hunter. It's too much Miracle Molly. It's too much Harley. It's too much. Um, hey, watch yourself. Punchline. You can you can never have too much Harley. But they're they're real like they I especially this like the fear state stuff. I, it's like they've taken over the book and, and and it's not really and like Batman's like almost not in it. Mm. Uh, yeah. So like I know Detective Comics is going to actually Batman is not going to be in Detective. The whole idea is that he leaves the city and so Detective is going to be the Gotham City book with everyone else. That's fine. That's cool. That's its own story. That's what it's going to do. The Batman book should be about Batman. I I just I think you could have maybe done we're gonna have you know we had our joker arc and now let's bring in miracle molly and do this other stuff the unsanity collective it's kind of a dumb name um let's do that now let's go scarecrow and then we'll do something else i, I feel like they're trying to balance the future state scarecrow new characters and batman like and then Ghost Hunter, and then Ghost Hunter is also the backup, and then Batman's like kind of not in his own book. That's what I think the problem is. Ah, uh, so Jorge it's, not you're, it's not that you're underwhelmed; it's just you're like, huh? Ah, uh, there's a lot going on here that I think I think not about Batman. I think Joker War was a stronger story than where we are now. Well, Fear State's been interesting; it's been fine, but I I I think his no, the art's fantastic. Our ham is incredible. Yeah. All right, two more. Let's get out of here. Josh says, favorite comic moments that happen around or about Halloween. It's spooky oh. season. Uh I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously long Halloween is an easy answer. Um a lot of Halloween comics. I mean, there's there's horror comics and spooky comics and what's the What's the Avengers Justice League? 
Oh, the parade. The parade, um, the Halloween in parade. Vermont. It's in Vermont. Yeah. 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 That, that is a cool, yeah. I don't, they don't do it in comics anymore, but there was a, a, a shared real life event that they would put into both Marvel and DC comics back eh, in like eighties, right? Oh like, no, it like, was in the seventies. Like seventies. Uh, yeah. 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 I think it's uh, Rutland. I think the place yeah, is called yeah, Rutland. Yeah. 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 Uh, so they would have a shared Halloween event, uh, a not 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 an official Marvel and DC crossover, of course, but the, but but this 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 one real life event took place in both books. Yeah, that's, that was, that's always that's I like I like that story. That's cool. That's a fun story. The yeah, Rutland yeah. Halloween Parade. Yeah. So the famous one is the Neil Adams Batman issue with the. Uh, it looks like the the Grim Reaper is the villain. There's the issue with he's got a cloak and a scythe and a skull face. And there's this giant double page, uh, page spread. Yeah, that sounds right. It's a Harlan that, Ellison that, that, story. Um, uh, it's a Harlan Ellison story? Yeah. The idea is his. I think Denny O'Neill actually wrote it. But anyway, yeah, point, Denny there's O'Neill a, wrote it, yeah. There's a big um, double page spread of all of this, the, these floats in this Halloween parade with Neil Adams drawing like goofy looking versions of the Marvel superheroes, like uh, like cosplay versions. Mm. And then they have the real life creators from Marvel walking as spectators in the parade, watching the parade. And then in a Marvel comic, cool. they just do the reverse version with DC creators attending this Halloween parade. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I like it. I'm kind of a, I don't know. I don't know if the bosses knew about it, but. Uh. <laughs> well, it was, plus it was a more innocent time, you know, it's just one yeah. of those wink, wink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, DC always has those Halloween anthologies too. I haven't read this one, uh, the Are You Afraid of, of Dark Side, but it, I, I like that name. It's okay. It's all yeah. right. It's they always not, do a it, Halloween comic though. It's not, um, it's not like, I, I read it. A couple of them are okay. One one's like, huh? And then <laughs> like they they just they're they're they they're vastly different in what they are. How you, if you're like five months behind, how did you read that? That just came out. I randomly <laughs> grabbed. A couple oh, okay, of okay, them. Like, okay. Like try to stay current on the number ones. Like you know the big giant ones. I'm like, oh, I just need to tackle you. Otherwise, you're gonna be the bane of my existence for the rest of my okay, existence. Okay. Like I'm like gonna, you're gonna be the hurdle that I hit and I can't get past. Yeah. So I try and take care of those ones. Um, like I read the uh, or the Aquaman one. Uh, the the anniversary giant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, final question from Jason. <laughs> Uh, he says, does image canceling the second prince, we were talking about this earlier, uh, how does that impact your order? Also, shout out to Brock for his great packing skills. Oh. He, I don't know, you saw those, you saw that box, right? Yes, that- I saw that box and I was like, that is how, that, like, I pack with that, like, <laughs> every time I pack something, this the opening of Ace Ventura is playing in the back <laughs> of my mind and I am going, oh, okay, I'm f- fuck this guy, I gotta but yeah, I saw that. I was like, "Yes, that." Jason, I- Jason received the box from us that just showed up in uh, not near mint condition. Let's yeah. just say, but uh, the comics showed up great because of Brock's backing skills. Uh, no, so uh, it doesn't really affect how I order books. Um, second prints tend to sell m- very differently. It is rare that I miss so badly that I need them, like. <laughs> As, oh, shit, I have to, like, fill orders with second prints. Usually it's like, yeah, we got some second prints to throw on and people grab them because they're variant covers. But Image does returnability on a lot of their number ones. And so I generally don't need second prints on a book like that because I get enough copies of the number one. So we don't need extras. Um, some second prints and third prints are just now more of like a spec market thing. Of oh yeah, it's, I, I'd say they're ninety percent a variant cover. Yeah, more so than I than actually like you know. Oh, this is a book that is sold out in need. They usually announce second prints immediately, and I'm like, dude, copies are still a diamond. Like I've got a this is a returnable. I've, any store worth a damn has a stack of them. Like. It's fine. Like, do all the second prints you want, but it doesn't really change how I order. Um, I mean, it'll change all the guys that signed up, sign me up for every second print. 
you know, <laughs> well, not <on> that. <laughs> they're going to get less books now. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's just another variant cover for the most part. Um, yeah, I can't. I think like well, Superman, I'm like son of Superman, son of Kal-El. We need most of those back. Um, so those second prints are going to be pretty helpful. Uh, other than that, like, I don't, when was the last time I needed a second print? Like, we got like 10 of them this week, but it was all stuff we still had plenty of the first prints. It's just because people were like, oh, it's variant cover. I'll take that. Last time uh, I needed the second print? Yeah, it's like, it's, oh, Moon Knight, I guess Moon Knight 3. Like, that that did blow out. That was some spec heavy book. But yeah, but people that, don't. Like, but that, you had to get a second print because the spec market destroyed the first print. So well, actually, that's order. usually why. Yeah, I mean that's usually why we have to. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's usually why you have to get it because there's some crazy speculation. But most of the time, it doesn't really it doesn't usually become <laughs> something special. So. Like where you legitimately under order, or where something was under ordered so much, and then everybody wanted the second prints. Yeah, it has been a while since it's been like that crazy that we've really needed one. Um. Was it like, was something killing the children? Oh, like number one, we went through like eight printings on that. Yeah, uh, but like that, no, because we had plenty of those for a while. And we had the, we did. Oh, we had plenty of copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Department yeah, of yeah, Truths for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We had lots of extra copies of that. Again, yeah, we're ordering like seventh printings on Department of Truth, and it's just like a variant cover at this point. So, but yeah, no, they, they sell. They sell. All right. Everyone's chasing that is it that for this. Third print number. Is it for this spooky episode? Is it spooky? I don't think so. I don't know. Episode of the Comic Conspiracy Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Uh, although this will go up Monday as normal. Um, we'll we'll have a more normal recording schedule next week. Thank you to our high-tier Patreon backers. Joe Duff, Craig Anderson at clearpathcoaches.com, Jimmy Rivera at the Social Forum Podcast, and Talon Bray. Thank you all very much for your continued support of the Comic Conspiracy Podcast, Patreon which is uh, patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. You can find us over at comic conspiracy podcast.com. If you want to check out our previous episodes, uh, they're also on Apple podcast and Spotify head over to comics, conspiracy.biz. Lots of comics on there to purchase uh, Brock and pack them. So even the post office can't destroy them. Usually, usually, I mean, no, it no takes, guarantee, oh, but it takes a lot for them to do it, but yeah, I mean they're going slower now, so they shouldn't have you know, they they shouldn't be like damaged you know unless like they're slow pressing them or slow mangling them. Well, they always will. It's, it's always a crapshoot whether it shows up in good shape or not. Uh, head over to conspiratorbrock dot com. That's Brock's blog. Video playlist, unboxing videos. Once he's settled in, mm-hmm. I don't know Almost the last there. time you did one. Been there. Little break. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we all need a break sometimes. I, I've taken about a month break. I'm going to do a like a large one to compile like three, <sighs> three weeks worth of books, and then I'm like, all right, I'm back on my schedule. Okay. I got my, uh, my the fo- stuff set up. So yeah, it looks good. I can see part of it. Wanders in the Fourth Dimension podcast. Charlie's Doctor Who podcast. New Doctor Who on. So they're back to weekly covering the new ups, new season of Doctor Who. So check that out. And don't uh, forget to, uh, obviously, don't miss. Don't forget to miss. Don't forget. Uh, yeah. Don't miss. There are definitely some things on this promo area. You can say, don't forget to miss this. Don't, don't miss. Miss, this. miss this also, completely. Also, don't forget Kevin's weekly interview series called Between the Panels at FanBaseExpress.com. And check out uh, LeanneHill.com. Uh, my wife and all her artwork over there are now on her Etsy shop at Etsy.com slash shop slash Art. And if you're on a ton Twitter, of her stuff the other weekend, Twitter, nice. <laughs> and if you're on Twitter, follow Ryan Higgins, Ryan. That is me. Brock is Brock Sager. Toby is Toby XI. Charlie is insanity in chaos. Kevin is that Kevin Sharp. And the store is comics con store. And uh, we'll be back on uh, Geekbox this week to talk about. Uh, well, definitely Dune. I'm not sure what else we're talking about. Definitely Dune. I know we got a lot of stuff to say about that. Part one. And our good friends over at Manga Machinations. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>